going on, everybody? Welcome. You're watching or listening to an episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are addressing hmm. our mutual belief that martial arts would be bigger if it were not for martial artists. Oh, scandalous. Hang around. This one... It's not going to ruffle any feathers. It won't, but it could get a little spicy. Maybe. If you're new to what we do, check out whistlekick.com where we've got everything that we do from our projects to our products. And if you find a product in the store that you like, use the code PODCAST15, save 15%. This show, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, has its own website, so you can dig into all the episodes that we've ever done, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can also sign up for the newsletter. You can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick, share episodes with folks. Anything that you're willing to do helps us out, and if you want the entire list of all the things that we ask you to do, if you find value in our content, whistlekick.com slash family. you got to type it in. All right. Martial artists are the reason martial arts isn't bigger. You brought this topic up. I you, did. You you said, put this on the list. I want to do an episode about it. I have talked about this from the early days mm -hmm. of martial arts radio. I believe wholeheartedly that in... I, I'm, I'm going to loosely call it Western culture, but really acknowledge that my experience is as an American mm -hmm. living in America. If you look at broad participation in the martial arts globally, it is roughly two, 250 million people. If you look at participation in the United States, it is less than half that percentage. Mm -hmm. The majority of which are children. Absolutely. I would agree with that, for sure. Why? Why does that happen? Anybody does anything... I'm going to put on my, my consultant hat for a moment. <laughs> Every action that we take is based on value exchange. We've talked about that before. We believe, <clears throat> inherently, whatever we do is better than the alternatives. <clears throat> I go to class because it's better than not going to class. I don't go to class on a day that I'm sick or injured or whatever because it's the better choice. Mm -hmm. I eat this over that because it's a better choice, etc. A big part of value comes in with belief. And I believe that Americans believe martial arts is for kids, a thing that is done in movies is equivalent to MMA and that most of them are stupid because I've heard so many martial artists saying terrible things about other martial arts. Hmm. Every one of those beliefs mm -hmm. is rooted in what martial artists say that the public hears. Yeah, I think with the exception of the kids one, I don't think other martial artists are saying martial arts is only for kids. There are a lot of schools for whom the majority of their marketing is about kids. All right, all right, all right. You 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 may have turned me around on that. That is that is true. That is I true. see <clears throat> now this there are exceptions. There are exceptions oh, all over the place. Yeah. Here. And I'm not saying that this is any of anything here is a hundred percent. One of the subjects we've tackled that is is less about this, but I think is is the the mindset is the same. So many people dropping out after earning their black belt, their first degree mm -hmm. black belt, mm -hmm. because schools and media have conditioned us to believe that that is the standard, and once you reach that, you're done. It's a, a dramatically diminishing rate of return on effort. So why bother? That I, I got my black belt. Don't you want to get to your black belt? We have a black belt club. Mm, yep. Black belt being a finish line. The goal. And once you reach your goal, you're done. Yeah. That's there are true. plenty of schools out there that put the word black belt in the name of their school. Mm -hmm. You are conditioning people <clears throat> that 
that is the goal. You are a factory mm -hmm. to get to that point, and then you go off and do something else. Mm -hmm. So put that aside. Children, MMA, what else did I say? Uh, infighting, and it's uh, movies and media. <clears throat> yeah. We as martial artists have the ability to push back on these things. Mm -hmm. All it would take in, let's, let's say, let's say, let me address all of these. Okay. So let's take the kids thing first. Yeah. The belief that martial arts is for kids. I believe it is rooted primarily in the way a lot of schools conduct their business because frankly, it's easier to get kids to try a thing than yeah. adults to try a thing. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> and, go ahead. and it's easier to get kids because parents are often looking for things for sure. their kids to do while they're at work or whatever. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm not suggesting that the way a school goes about getting students has to change dramatically. So it's marketed to everyone. That's a silly way to market. I understand that I'm a marketing consultant. Yeah. If you are marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one. Mm. But it wouldn't take much to also acknowledge classes available for kids, for adults too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the things that benefit children, focus, movement, teamwork, teamwork, respect, mm -hmm. uh, Let's let's just take a look at social media these days. Adults need it more than kids. Mm. Kids are doing a lot better at it. Just going to throw that out there. We can convey this message. Yep. We can have more family classes. We can have more adult classes. We can do this. Mm. But we, collectively, don't necessarily want to do that. Starting a program, starting any martial arts program is difficult. And if you don't have enough adults in your adult class, it takes a lot of energy to grow that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting it doesn't. I'm not saying that where we are is the result of not putting in some trivial amount of effort. I am saying it is our responsibility. It is our fault. We as martial artists have gotten to here because of us. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's the kids. <clears throat> Media. The best example I can come up with, when Into the Badlands was announced, I did an episode mm -hmm. where I unfortunately predicted exactly what was going to happen. If we want more martial arts, television, and movies that accurately reflect what martial arts is, this is a show we need to support. We need to watch it. We need to share it. We need to say nice things about it. We need to encourage our non-martial arts friends to watch it. What we cannot do is sit back and go, this show is stupid, I hate it, that's not real, blah, 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 and then complain that there isn't also martial arts content. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. What did they make it? Three seasons? Mm -hmm. We had three of the stars on the show. I really enjoyed it. It was very well done. Was it everyone's cup of tea? No. But what I saw was so many people trashing it mm -hmm. that... What should have been the obvious, easy demographic didn't watch it. They didn't participate. And that's not the only example. If you look at the Showtime show Warrior. Warrior has struggled despite having Shannon Lee yeah. behind it. Mm -hmm. That show has struggled. And we've had a, one or two people from Couple. that show yep. on. And again, same idea. That show, I think, did a better job because it... it, it um, better represented the non-martial arts elements in the show. Yeah. And the fight scenes are absolutely phenomenal. But again, that show has struggled. Part of it, I think, because it's on Showtime. I think if that show was on HBO, it would have been a wholly different experience. Mm -hmm. But they didn't ask me. And so what that leaves us with, without more, let's call it authentic, that's not quite the right mm -hmm. word, more uh, meaty yeah. martial arts, mm -hmm. movies, and television we are left with the general public seeing martial arts as it's represented in more broadly viewed things. When we see Scarlett Johansson's character in a fight scene 
in Avengers or Black Widow, they look at that and they're like, okay, this is martial arts. Yeah. When we see something like John Wick, which is, you know, held up in, in our space as a wonderful martial arts movie, and, and you know, I can make that case. Yeah. <clears throat> the rest of the world sees it as violent and it creates conflicting messages. So if, if somebody just goes and they, if a martial arts friend says, you should check out John Wick, it's got some great martial arts. And one parent is watching that and the other parent walks in and sees that. And then the next day they have a conversation about enrolling their kid in martial arts. Mm. That's not gonna add up well. Yeah. And I would also say if you are an adult and you see, for example, you will go back to Scarlett Johansson and Black Widow sees that and says that's martial arts and I'm an adult and I want to learn, I want to learn that. Then they go to their local martial arts school and see people just punching and kicking. It looks nothing like that movie. There's a disconnect there. As well as the inverse, I would never be able to do these double backflips yeah. that I think are part of a martial arts curriculum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I don't try it. Yeah. Perfect proof. How many people say I have to get in shape before I can start training? Yep. That's something that I think every martial arts school owner has heard. Once I get in shape, I'll come to class. Yep. Okay. And I've heard it, you know, there have, there has been this scenario happening the last couple of years where a lot of students didn't train because they were not allowed mm -hmm. to. And I have had, I know of a black belt student friend of mine who has said, I would like to come back to the dojo, but I just don't feel like I'm in shape enough yet. That's a whole other yeah. subject, but it is it's all proof here. that we, even for people within the martial arts, we have built up these expectations of yep. what martial arts can and cannot be, is and is not, that are not reflective of the reality in most cases. Yeah. Okay. MMA. I, we've, we've had the subject, uh, we've addressed the subject a number of times in different ways, at least two episodes specifically mm -hmm. about it, MMA as a martial art, is it a martial art, etc. <clears throat> Just to quickly move forward, there are plenty of MMA fighters who I consider to be traditional martial artists. Mm -hmm. MMA, in my opinion, can be trained in a with, with a, a, a nod to traditional... With a traditional mindset. Yeah. Can, it can be. It can be. Okay. But, as we have watched the largest MMA fight promotion, the UFC, mm -hmm. that's not disputed, grow in social reach, we have seen a very obvious movement to take the playbook from professional wrestling to create characters and personas personas that people feel an emotional attachment to good and bad good and bad and that has led to the most famous mma fighters sadly being at least outwardly terrible people mm -hmm. and again if you have people who do not understand what martial arts is what traditional martial arts is and it's at least a decent cross-section of the population because of the number of people who, when they ask me what I do, and I tell them about whistle kick, their first response is, oh, so MMA. It's not one out of 100 people. It is far more than that. Yeah. That tells me that there's a good chunk who misunderstand. Why is that our fault? Because we don't have a competing promotion. We have karate combat. There are some things out there that are absolutely wonderful, but we tear those down too. So they don't get bigger and better. Mm -hmm. right? Number one. Number two, there is a strong contingent in the traditional arts that love MMA. I enjoy watching it at times, mm -hmm. depending on who's fighting and yep. context. I especially really love amateur. Amateur. I, I, was just, I, think I would say this exact same thing. Amateur can be so much fun. Yeah. But we are holding up certain things. And the best example I can think of is uh, Conor McGregor. I think it was his last fight when he was using his shoulder, which was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm looking at this strictly as a fighter, if I'm looking at strictly the combat aspects, 
absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yet how many traditional martial artists who have traditional martial arts schools talked about and shared video clips of that reinforcing to people that this person who is, I'm sorry, a terrible human mm -hmm. being based on everything I've seen of him out of the ring. And maybe it's a persona. We don't know. I don't know, but that but is what's that's being... That publicly it is, being portrayed. It is not being... I am not being signaled that this is a character and mm -hmm. fake, yeah. whether or not it is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. My assumption has to be that it is real. Other people believe it's real, and so they see person who teaches karate to kids talking about person that they believe to be terrible doing something interesting and creative, connecting those two dots and going, I don't want my kid at your school. Yeah. I don't want to train at your school. I don't want to tell my friend who's interested Oh, I have a friend who teaches. They're just going to be quietly backing off. Yeah. Okay. And what was the fourth one? Uh, media, MMA, kids. I should have written it down. I'll get there in a second. I don't remember. That's okay. Can we, can we rewind? We can't rewind while we're uh, recording. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's all right. Yeah. Because if, if we if we look at it from an 800 foot view, it all comes back to allowing others outside of our world to fill the space in our world. And we don't fill that space because we are fearful of what others in our world will say the amount of flack anyone gets for posting anything about martial arts specifically video here's what i do here's mm -hmm. how i do it there's a there's a gentleman on tiktok i'm not going to name his name and he started posting videos of him doing um some screamer work with sticks mm -hmm. he in in none of the videos I've seen does he claim a particular rank mm -hmm. or expertise or title or time training. It is him demonstrating what he is working on. Mm -hmm. 75% of the comments are hateful. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting and not surprising. Now, if that goes on, is somebody who sees that who wants to also share their journey going to be more or less likely yeah are there people who are responding that are not martial artists yeah but should not 100 percent of the people who are martial artists be supporting this person practicing wherever they are whatever they are doing however good or bad they are if someone tells me hey i trained today I don't need to know what you trained, how hard you trained, why you trained for me to be supportive of that. It still made it a good day for that person. You don't know where people were at. Oh, that was the fourth one. We got there. I knew we'd get there. I knew we would get there if I talked long enough. This consistent argument that that is wrong, this is right, mm -hmm. what I do is the best, what you do is crap. If you are someone who is interested in martial arts, and I've watched this happen so many times. Hi, I'm interested in doing martial arts. What should I do? Because they have been conditioned by media that this style is better than this style, but mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't really know. They have an assumption based on what they've heard, seen, seen. that there is a discrete difference and that that difference is the most relevant thing to suss out. I have said, and we've done at least one episode on this subject, if the response to that question is not, tell me what you are looking for, you are wrong. Yeah. If what martial art should I do is met with an actual answer by an actual martial artist, you are wrong. Yeah. The, my fallback is always, if there was one best style in the world, everybody would do it. That's the only one that would be there. Yep. Yep. If, if, if this thing is so much better than everything else, 
why isn't everyone doing that thing? Mm -hmm. There are so many more reasons, uh, so many more uh, factors in someone selecting a martial arts school than what style that are more important. And if you disagree with this, you're, you are part of the problem. If you say style X is the only thing you should do because of your body type or um, it's the most effective on the street or whatever, what if that person doesn't have that school available to them? What if it is taught by someone who will not jive with... What if that student doesn't care about those things? All it does is set them up for distancing from the arts, trying, not finding what they want, and not trying again. Or, inevitably, what happens if those questions are public on social media, because I've watched it, you should do this. You should do this. You should do this. You should do this. The last time this happened, I think it was like the eighth person to comment. What are your goals? Yeah. How often do you want to train? Mm. Where do you live? Yeah, I, I think... How long do you want to travel to get to class? I mean, these questions are really are great. And I've always been a strong advocate of... There's no, you know, obviously I'm being a part of Wisconsin, there's no such thing as the best style, right? But I think more importantly, it's not about the style and it's about the instructor. Mm -hmm. I think you can find a great instructor in any martial art and learn from that person and enjoy your experience. And you can find a bad instructor in any martial art, which Absolutely. will turn things off. So it's to me, it's more about person you're learning from and less about what you're learning and understanding who those instructors are i have people ask me not all the time because i live in rural vermont and we don't have a ton of people but versus population i'm asked frequently i'm interested where should i go what should i do who mm -hmm. should i train with my answer isn't always the same mm -hmm. okay where do you live again all right, where do you work? Oh, you work over here. So you're kind of close to this person who has these classes. And I've, I've worked out with you at the gym or we've had social time together. And I've got a sense as to your personality. I think you do really well with this person over here. Or, you know, where should I enroll my kid? You know, I know you're really close to this school and they do have a kid's program. But your kid's kind of rambunctious and they don't seem to be quite as tolerant mm. of high energy kids. I think this instructor over here would be a better choice. It has to be that detailed. It has to be that nuance. And it can't be this person over here has, you know, their lineage is is mm -hmm. much weaker and and you know they they're or you know this person over here has much higher rank and so they must be better missing the point yeah so when i look at that stuff especially the collection of all four of these reasons i get really sad this is one of the things that we're railing against. This is why we're style agnostic. This is why we don't put out content that says, this is the right way, this is the wrong way to train or to do this form or this technique or here's 75 ways to defend against, you know, a finger to the eyeball. We don't... 74 more. <laughs> you got to watch to see that one. I don't see the point. I don't think it adds value. I don't think it makes people's lives better. I believe people get better. They become better versions of themselves from training. I also believe most martial artists believe that. Hmm. I think you're probably correct. I think a large portion, I don't know that I'm going to say most, I think a large portion at least will say that about someone training regardless of what they're training, how they're training, that the mere pursuit of that betterment is what matters. And I would like us to consider where the world is, not the martial arts world, but the world world, and recognize that we, 
as an industry have a greater opportunity to affect change on the world in a relatively short period of time than anything else. And I think as an instructor, you could endeavor to foster that change within your own group. Yes. Of the people that commented bad things, one and then the other, and then the other, and then the other, and then the other, you're not going to know the answer to this question, but you know how many of them run their schools and are in charge, and how many of them just are a black belt in a school yeah. just commenting bad stuff on other people? Yeah. If the instructor of that school could foster a better way to think of other martial artists, it trickles down. It does. I just want to see everybody train because I want people to enjoy training. And I get really bent out of shape when I see people doing something I love, taking action that stops other people from doing something that I love. If you love martial arts, it is your response, excuse me, your responsibility to at the very least not negatively impact the desire of others to train. Yep. I'm not saying everybody has to get out there and do the sort of things that we do or run a school that is super open and positive, but at the very least, just don't be a jerk. Anything else to add? No, no, I think that's good. Okay. Don't be a jerk. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you have feedback, always welcome to hear it. I'm always open to hear it. There we go. I got myself a little riled up there towards the end. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you have feedback for Andrew, maybe something for a Q&A episode mm -hmm. or a topic, guest suggestion, you can email him too. Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Our social media all over the place is at Whistlekick. Uh, we have training programs, not how to punch and kick, but how to get stronger or faster or have better stamina or better flexibility. That one's even free. You can find those at whistlekick.com. If you want something that's not free, use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.